So my point is to provoke you to say something interesting, and I will listen, but I just, my point to say a, a few introductory words. And uh, one of the phenomena in biology, which is mathematically uh, very attractive, is amplification of complicated objects uh, according to their signature. And the simplest kind of used artificially is PCR, right? You have a signature, and that's enough to amplify some molecules, exponential amplification, and exponents a big number certainly very attractive. Mathematician, when you have 10 to the 20, it's very pleasant to see this, right? And uh, my question would be, yes, what are other systems of the type is known, and how we can artificially create a new system of that kind? So the obvious thing besides PCR, of course, in, in nature, we have amplification of survival, whatever it means. And so we have bacteria, and they have, a, say, bacteria, other organisms are not so big numbers, so they're less interesting. And you uh, amplify them if they, for example, resistant to some particular antibiotics. And then another thing, even better, they have a, a strong amplification for viruses because they're small particles and how they amplify in the ambience of bacteria except, uh, which they accept. And th another example, of course, basic example is human or in general vertebrate immune, acquired immune system. Yeah, when you amplify proteins with some particular patterns corresponding to their being ability to dock, to, 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 to have docking, docking with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, pathogens. So there are these examples. And then one of them, this P PCR, was kind of used by artificial system kind of by mathematicians or other by computer science by Adelman about 25 years ago. And they, that, you know, this activity of, of, um, was of DNA computing was uh, kind of ignited, and then it was continued. But I'm not certain, it was my, my question to the audience, how reliable what you can learn. Say, about 15 years ago, there was a publication by, by, by I think, by name of Yehud Shapira, when they claimed they can make this kind of system going into some body and detecting prostate cancer, even curing it up, up to a point. Is it true? It was never confirmed. Was it true, by the way? Do you know something about it? But Yehud Shapira. Yeah. There was this work by in, 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 in Nature actually published by Yehud Shapira. They can make this uh, kind of almost universal computer by make on, on DNA, on the amplification and with some enzyme, which you can implement on a cell. In particular, it can detect some prostate cancer and even do something. And then there was publication, but I don't think it was following. I haven't followed it myself. For example, what is you know about that? Uh. Biologists. I probably it's prostate crazy. cancer is very easy to detect by PSA. Yeah. No, no, no. But it's what? Well, no, but that's the whole point. That's I think the difference of mathematical. It's not the question easy or not. Whether it's interesting or not. If you have completely different approach, aut automatic. You don't look. Let's say you put, put my micro machine inside and they do it and you don't look like this. Yeah, actually, yeah. you can do early detection of cancer yeah. by looking at the DNA in the blood. Yes. Okay, and you may find on, like oncogene, uh, yeah. like mutation in oncogene, that you can predict that this patient may develop cancer. No, but this principally different approach. This is exactly the point. Yeah, it's a principally different approach based on um, amplification. You put some cell in your body, some structure in your, in your blood, and then multiplies if. There is that. So it worked like immune system. This fundamental difference, what you do, immune system does, which is certainly by far more intelligent. All these tests are handmade, yeah, and they never go beyond certain level. Immune system goes beyond. So this is a point imitate in the way immune system to use amplification and to use unspecified detection, which is selected then by some process, right? And that's my question: is how far you can go with that? For example, let me. So, so you don't know about this work by Yehud Shapiro, no? No. Okay. This is my, what's my question? Of course, there are some other alternative ways, but this is kind of, you know, it's a completely different story, right? And, and, the, and, and the second point is, so there was a discussion this by people trying to make minimal bacterium. The question is if you can make maximum, maximal bacterium. Namely, it would be a bacterium and also probably collection of plasmids, which may be turned by simple, by simple stimulus say, into, into viral particles. They uh, go along together, and then there is a parameter which you want to select for. And to make it fast automatic, you have to create an artificial community of having a collection of plasmids, which are turnable automatically to plasm to viral particle, go into bacteria, very fast develop, because you can prepare bacterium to very fast evolution. And so it works like immune system, and then does what you want without knowing how it works in, in several stages. So this is how it works, kind of parallel 
this was recent development in, 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 in machine learning, there was this, in, say, in 80s, they, there was competition between machine, in machine learning between statistical approach, this, this uh, <coughs> using statistical learning on one hand, and there were neural networks, and certain statistical learning went ahead because they analyzed more carefully. But then, eventually, in the last kind of five years, neural network take, took over, with, where the point was not understanding what you're doing. You gain of not understanding. You do it by hand in a very primitive way because there is a power of amplification of some process. You iterate something. And the same you can imagine here. You may not know how a particular pathway works, but if you create a community of viral particles and bacteria, it can do it much better than you, if something has been done in this respect. And it's how feasible to create controllable bacteria. You give a chemical signal, it starts mutating in particular locus, start taking plasmids turned into viral particles, inject them when you give another signal, etc. And then you can create very fast, by far kind of faster, because usually you make selection of bacteria for a particular purpose. You make some injection by CRISPR, you make some gene modified by selection, but it's a specific process. You can make it quasi-universal, not universal as a Turing machine, but universal like neural networks. General method, very fast. What was done about that, and what are possibilities, what are chances, what are constraints are there? And this my questions to the audience, and certainly I just want to know what is done. And just, uh, I think what is done a bit is, is using DNA to write information. Yes, that's of course what will be used. But this exactly means the point of amplification. This, of course, yes, I agree. This has been done, but this is kind of no. It's not DNA, you want to use bacteria and viral particles when they're already there in machinery for the production and doing complicated things. It's already ready for you. You just have to exploit it in a, some structure and it's, uh, I think it's quite, it seems feasible from generic principle. Of course, biologically, I cannot judge what will be obstacles, how much it would cost. Of course, it would be a big thing to do. It's not you do like that, yeah. It takes time and energy, whatever. But it looks very interesting to, to at least to imagine, to, to know what the potential, what the pathways are there to exploit and to guess. A mathematician may predict, guess how hard to do and then, of course, try to do it. So what you can say about it? No. In genomics, uh, there is a theory of maximal size of bacterial genome. No, they may be not very big. It may be a collection of bacteria that absorb diff 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 different plasmids. You have a collection of plasmids, a collection of bacteria not very big, but on the contrary, they may have a rather small. They only survive in a particular environment, so they may be harmless. And then they absorb plasmids for a particular function, then select them. They might be strong enough to be selectable. They don't have to be too big. They may incorporate some of them into... Where are you going to put the bacteria? Hmm? Where are you going to put it? No, these bacteria are just, you're just big. I mean, you can imagine you can breed them in huge amounts. And then they, for example, you want to make bacteria producing... Put it in, your ba in somebody's body? No, 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 no. First, it's the most easier thing to... You want to produce new antibiotics. So you make bacteria, which is very mutable, and there is some other bacteria you want to kill. And you put it, create a situation, and survive only if it kills. If it doesn't kill, it doesn't survive. And make very fast mutable, same control of bacteria, and then you, you can hope in a matter of days you produce antibiotics. Days, not months or years. Yeah, very fast, which you can do, of course. You have a patient with unknown kind of bacteria, an unknown disease, infection. You, you, you combine this with his blood, and then in a matter of days, it works like immune system, but much faster and under control. Because viral particles reproduce faster than your, your immune system work. You can do it in much bigger quantities, yeah? Not in a matter of a milliliter, but a quantity of 100 liters. So you can amplify it by a factor of 1,000. So it has potential if you know how to prepare. You have to make beforehand this universal bacterium, this universal system, easily adjustable, right? And that's the question is if you can do that. You don't have to be big, yeah? It's very much because it's very different from usual bacteria, but usually the known pathways, kind of, all partly unknown, of course. Um, why, why do you want to pack it all in one uh, super bacteria? Uh, why not just keep it to very diverse population and... But you don't know what you do, like universal computer, you, you can, you, it's a scheme, you have, must be adjustable. So you have to do it once and for all and have this in your kind of reservoir and also collection of these plasmids or viruses. And then you guess which you throw in and just do it. It's just much like, why you have universal computer? You don't make computer for this purpose, it's easier to have it. It's much more practical, do it once. Once you create a hard work, you create it very messy work, you do it and then poop, it does fast. And this is like immune system works, yeah? It's one immune system, universal scheme, more or less, for all vertebrates, at least for mammalian, this universal system, yeah? And how do you want to <laughs> guarantee that 
it could only attack that virus or bacteria. No, exactly. By selection, if it does something wrong, it doesn't survive. Exactly. And it makes selection mechanism. And what I understand is that you want to do this in vitro for that specific. Oh yes, yeah, so be for no in vitro if you want to produce some uh, you want to produce some some antibiotic then we'll check for toxicity. Of course, do the same. Make selection in the next stage. Of course, may have several stages. Yeah. But maybe it's uh, mutated to attack that certain bacterial virus. But maybe also. Oh, maybe many things may happen. Maybe of course, sure. You have to make proper provision for that. Sure. Of course, there are many kinds of... The question if you do it, if you, if you have a, a, a car and they say, oh, it can kill, kill passerby, of course you can, yeah. But you do it so it wouldn't do. Of course, like make it automatic. I want to clarify again. Yeah. You want to make a bacterium yes. that can produce 100 ant uh, antibiotics. No. What? No, 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 I have produced a bacterium which you can control. So it will go in particular mode of... Uh, mutation and then become producing and, and, and this antibiotics. It's like you have a computer program, it doesn't do any, or just anything else. You have to program it every time. Yeah. It's programmable bacterium. So you want to have several buttons, which one would produce one antibiotic? No, 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 not at all. I'm saying again, it's not how it, it works there. So how we work with the neural networks, yeah? It's not switch a button and get a result, right? You, you switch a button and start searching solution for a particular problem. And then it automatically goes through cycle and then it finds its solution. Mm -hmm. So you make it mutable, right? It's your mutable particular locus, which the, and, and mutable when you control this mutation. And then it, it, it becomes a mutation and put it into some surroundings. If you have an idea what you want to produce, divide it into stages. If you don't, you don't, right? So there may be possibly, basically, it's, and, and probably the most realistic, not to change it, it, it it's a chromosomal mutation, but it, ab absorbing plasmids, which are, can be turned into viruses. And so, and this is the most mutable element, the most ha huge population of them. So it makes it the fastest, right? So it will be on the molecular level, uh, on the level of viral particle evolution, bacteria is su supported, yeah? So the two-stage process you can imagine, yeah? And this will be... Th there is a system which works by selection and learns to to kill uh, yeah. bacteria, right? It's called the immune system. Yes, exactly. Would it, would it be satisfactory if we just uh, make kind of externalized immune system? Does it, it I think it's more difficult. My imagine because it's incorporated. No, the immune system has many kind of different kind of cells involved, right? The ampli amplification process is what you want to use, but I think it's easier to have amplification with viral particles and bacteria. Right. It seems to me it's kind of more realistic yeah, than to create artificial immune system yeah. outside of a uh, outside of a body. I think so this uh, I can't imagine. No. Maybe I don't know if my last name you see, but it looks me more uh, less flexible. Since you mentioned the immune systems, etc., one major properties of all these systems is the adaptation. Yeah. So it means the immune system in your body, when we take it out and put it in something else, in some other environment, is not an immune system anymore, it's something completely senseless. Yes. So the, the structure that you want to define needs a priori some constraints of where it should survive and how it should survive. So like neural networks, like artificial networks, whatever you want to have, you have to have a priori conditions for how the system should look like before you put it somewhere, because else it is not. No, absolutely, have a, no, but you take the bacteria, which is already sufficiently stable, and then you add some features, and keep selection, and first, it's a very slow process. You select the kind of bacteria with the properties you want, and simultaneously, you have to invent means, probably they exist, turning viruses to plasmids, so they go in, and when you want, they, if, you control, if you give a signal, they can go out. But basically, we, the bacteria will be kind of, Symbiosis with bacteria, unless you want to get, get them out and, and infect other bacteria to, to make the process fast. The problem here is, in your own body, there are a lot of bacteria that are actually good and necessary yeah, for you. Sure. When you just develop it in vitro, you don't have control for every variability that you might have. When you put it inside a living system, an adaptable, mutable system. No, but I don't speak in I, I, finding the most optimal based on variational principles. No, but I don't think about putting them in the human body. It's another issue. If you can make them so well that you can go into your body and do something, it will be next level. I don't speak about that. I'm speaking, but usually you do it in, in biotechnology. You make bacteria serving particular t technical purpose, chemical eventually, producing chemical, either known chemical or consuming chemical, or chemical serving simple chemical function like in the bacterium, right? So you don't know exactly what it is. And this is what you want to do. 
And all, and all bacteria more or less similar for that. I, I, don't, I don't know which I use usually. Yeah? I think E. coli or some variation mutation of E. coli. It's something very survival strong bacteria. But you want them to absorb, for example, to carry plasmids with specific properties which you don't know beforehand. The properties, you know what they want to do. You don't know how they would do that. And then to make it fast adaptable to this situation, faster than normal, because usually but you take mutations are slow. But if you can uh, make fast mutation in a particular locus without disturbing basic machinery in the bacterium, it can go get, uh, in principle by order of magnitude faster. And so it will the bacteria much faster creating what you want. So not in years, but in hours or, or, or days. You yeah. want to consider then instead of bacteria, viruses? Because yeah, viruses, of course, will plasmid and because they mutate faster, sure. So exactly. There are similar things like that that are already being done right. to, 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 to create new antibodies. Or there are, there are different uh, uh, type of names, uh, uh, DARPINs, or, or mm -hmm. where, where it's not using the bacteria, but it's actually using in vitro translation. Uh, uh, or sometimes it's... It in vitro translation? I don't know exactly how we efficient it nowadays in vitro translation. Yeah. Well, you, you, you can... You can ask him, he's the expert. So how massive and how stable it can be in vitro translation? Of course, it uses artificial selection of proteins with in vitro translation. But I, I, I there is a company, Moderna, yeah. that's what they are based on in vitro translation. They, yeah. make, <coughs> they make the RNA and then transfect it uh, this with liposome. But who actually makes translation? Have ribosome separately from the organism in the cell? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, outside. Outside of the cell, ribosome outside of the cell. On, w on, on what you scale? You can make it also <coughs> artificially, just build it without the ribosome. You don't have to translate. A translating without ribosome? It's, it's synthesized. Synthesis. Uh, synthesized. On, on large scale, indeed, yeah? How, uh, you got me curious, yeah, how big the scale and how adaptable it is. If you want to test, it is evolve. If you want to evolve and modify it. Very large scale. It's a, it's a big company. Model. But you say you can do it to evolve. So you can be uh, making actual antibodies, yeah? Absolutely. So there are people who are doing uh, yeah. molecular evolution. Yeah. Uh, for example, you, you, can, you can think of uh, uh, Don Hilbert at UTH in Zurich. Oh. Don Hilbert. Don Hilbert. Is, uh, is exactly working on, uh, has been long working on this type of uh, issues. How to, to make new, uh, uh, and that has uh, quite some success in creating new proteins and, and new folds and new new functions by by different modes of, of selection. One of them is is, is a, a ribosome display, which is to have the ribosomes uh, uh, um, present a protein, because it's tall, the translation, and and uh, 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 these proteins can be selected, and then you, you can retrieve the ribosome, and you have access directly to the nucleic acids that has encoded the protein you are interested in. So obviously what you need is to have a way to link. Yes, absolutely, of course, uh, link proteins with, with uh, RNA. Yeah. Exactly, so yeah. that is done, for example, by, by ribosome display. But again, the question is how, how, how kind of robust this mechanism is. You want to make it very simple and robust, yeah? For example, if I, can you, how fast you can make antibody, for example? can make outside of the body, have an infection, and your immune system doesn't work very well. What has what uh, uh, revealed to be difficult is that you need a fold that is stable and to mutate only specific place in that fold. Yes. So there, is, uh, 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 there are other groups, like the Plutton group, who has been working on this, on this problem. And they have developed what they call a DARPIN, which is a, a protein that is stable in the cytoplasm. Antibodies are generally stable on the outside of the cell because they, they need disulfate bridges. So a, a, a scaffold that is, that is stable inside the cell, and, then, and the difficulty is to mutate only specific positions. And, but then they make huge libraries that you can, that you can screen for. And then the question is, can you imagine principle, it will be, can be used for, as, as an artificial immune system? So this is, this is currently being used to develop yeah. To develop a, a highly specific, with very high affinity molecules, protein peptides yeah. directed against whatever peptide of your interest. But just creating the scaffold and the libraries of mutants uh, uh, took yes. 15 years. Yeah. But now yeah. that you have it, it's, it's extreme. Okay, you can use it, okay. You can use it. Yeah. Maybe the simplest system is optometrics. You know, you can go through chemical synthesis and selection uh, using short oligonucleotides. You can generate 
is short on goes to have high affinity and selectivity for any protein. So that, that can be used for labeling proteins, but also for targeting proteins as well. It's just all chemical. And I guess it can be made efficient. Yeah. Yeah, but this, I, I think, yeah, yeah, this is kind of immune system, yeah? But if you have something broader, if you, if you want to pre pre produce new antibiotics without knowing what you want to do, it will be not so easy. And, and, and selection in bacteria, in principle, you know, resistance to antibiotics develops very fast, right? And so, in and, and the same way, you can probably, if you have well-organized evolution, make new antibiotics against a particular bacterium. This is what I'm saying, yeah. The immune system is very special, of course, it's still very shaped, very well kind of defined problem, right? You have to fit. But if you want to do something about, with some biological function, you don't, you don't know how it's being chemically implemented, then you may have the broad spectrum of, of you have collection, a huge collection of, of viral particles of different kind, potentially uh, movable, mutable, and then make them work. Yeah, and I think exactly it's, it's a viral or plasmid mutation we should be on the, on, the really on the 10 to the 20 scale. So then what you need is a, is a huge collection of, of enzymes, because what you want is cre to create small <coughs> molecules that have antibiotic function. But, yes. And for that you need to have a... a, a but this exactly, we have a large collection of this... Uh, of enzymes that you right. can combine in different but ways. Just, right. so you can I do don't synthetic, think that this is being done. You can do synthetic biology and use a very small molecule that mimics the enzymatic activity. No, but this you can uh, produce so easily on such a large scale and being modified so fast. How? Why not? In the same system, how to do it? With bacteria, is a machine which automatically can do that. The question is already, bacteria is a machine which does many things if you properly control it. You don't have to think about that. That's the whole point. If you work at every of them, that it will be very long. The question is make it once and forever, and then it will do very fast. Okay. The problem in evolution is that you need to have a reward, right? Yes, exactly. And, and, and the question is how do you link... Yes, exactly. That's the point. How to make good uh, tricks to, 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 to go to a desirable direction. Exactly. But sometimes it's easy, sometimes not, right? So it's easier to make resistance for antibiotics, right? Either you die or not. But this you have to do for, for other environments. That's my question. What are schemes to, to creating this kind of artificial rewards for, 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 for bacteria or for viruses. And that's exactly the problem, yeah. Once you have it, it's, you give it tremendous possibility. But again, the point is mathematically, if you have a little something, yes, sufficient bias, you can uh, amplify it logically in rep with repetition and become very strong. Because the point is, mathematically, you don't need much. You need a little bit in one direction, and then it starts start working. But the question is to have in, enough biological information to start thinking about mathematically and then hopefully implement it uh, biologically. Um, how far is your general idea away from the idea of molecular machines? Yeah, because they're biological, not molecular. Molecular machines do machines. Yeah, and this is exactly what the Adelman and these people to, afterwards were trying to do. But they have obvious limitations because they're not as, as that adaptable. Right? You have to change them yourself. But here, it's, it's, it will be by selection mechanism, they will be uh, uh, adaptable. You know, machine, you have to do it. And, and these things will do themselves. Already they are there. By viruses and bacteria, they are molecular machines. You only have to adjust them. Right? That's the whole point. Of course, molecular machines, they're ready. The point is they're there in your hands. I mean, you have to do the subject, uh, subject of them. Very powerful, very versatile machines. And just to learn enough points to make them do what you want. And in a controlled way. What kind of viruses do you hmm? think of them? No, oh, oh no, if you have some viruses, if you go in, but you can control, they will not. Uh, kill the cell, yeah, just uh, they, they inject their DNA and they become just uh, plasmid there, and functional plasmid. And you may be controlled when you want to go outside if you want to, if you don't like this bacteria or something. Of course, this can be done, yeah. I think, I think many things just now we can do anything, it will be imaginable, yeah, locally in biology. The question how to make out of them kind of properly and you know, build up a machine. Of course, I, I think the right, all ingredients now with CRISPR you can control things fantastically, yeah. The question is how to use it. And amplification is the key word. You can amplify things which you cannot do otherwise. And you can, you can beat your intuition in any experience. If you have exponenti exponentiation, it's smarter than we can do anything. What you may want to think about is naturally systems evolve because of reward, positive reinforcement, reinforcement, but also because of negative reinforcement, which means stress. Yes. As a matter of fact, I guess uh, inducing a mutation due to stress is a less harmful way maybe later on for applications than by reward. 
because the major reward. No, no, no. Reward is not the reward is survival. The only reward is survival. That's it. That, that's it. Yeah. You just with a certain ways you make certain groups survival fast and then move it in a desirable direction. And of course you have to do it with ways. You don't kill everybody, but just create some gradient of survival and then search it exactly as you do in a, in, a, in, a, in a neural network with the same kind of logic. You have cycle after cycle, there are these weights, and this is a this mathematical, again, we don't know, by the way, how it works. It, it's extremely e efficient, but for no for unknown reason, yeah? And, uh, and, but in also in evolution, we don't know why it works so efficiently. We don't care in a way, yeah? We just want to exploit it, that's the point. And just, yeah? So, we <coughs> came up with one suggestion, which is to create, and there are two of them, create random libraries, either of small proteins yes. or of small DNAs, synthetically, yes. and then just test them and come up with the, with right. the with good, good antibiotics, which yes. we're already doing. You want to have the bacteria do it. No, no, you can use this, we can use this library. This library can be incorporated to plasmids and then use, yeah, no the question. The thing that you heard is yeah. that you need a reward in order for, if you want to go through a bacteria, you need a reward system. Yes. And the reward system that you can do is by the environment. Yes. So for example, and it depends on the, what you want. So if you want antibiotics, you surround your library of, of random, no, no, but you want to kill, you know, no, but very easy, but well, look, 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 you want to kill particular bacteria, you, exactly. you control the situation, whenever concentration goes, go, 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 doesn't go down, you kill them, but the only reward is the death, the only reward life gives death, it's very easy, certainly, yeah, sure, 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 I understand it, no, no, but how do you do it in practice, of course it exists, but it's trivial, yeah, the way it's subtle, more subtle things, yeah, of course, you, if it's certain environment, to add an agent which kill doesn't kill the bacteria, that's easy. I mean, of course, you can do that. This already not so bad. The question is still how to make the system of this movable plasmids easily controllable. So here they're active, here they're not active. How to make bacteria mutate in a particular locus and, and, and mutate in a, in a nice way, not just by noise, but inserting certain interesting sequences in your, in your proteins? So okay. you, can, you can induce genes that increase mutagenesis. No, but mutagenesis, what kind of mutagenesis? You don't want, like the so polymerase do, just making a noise. It's, you can use at some point. You want to insert some pieces of proteins which may be useful. You may have library of those and insert them there. You have library of millions of plasmids, yeah, and which you can be brought on random or in, in control. Because if you have 10 to the 16 of bacteria, you can easily insert there billions yeah, of different plasmids, which you can prepare beforehand of various properties and in different combinations. And then you can, well, of course, experimentally. You have to do experiments. You cannot do it. Partly prepare and then do experiment. The question is if you can create such a system, right. such a such a project. I think it's a big thing to try to do, but I think it's great fun to do it. Yeah, I think you can start with small number, like small number of plasmid or whatever. Yeah. And provide the proof of principle. I think for a small number like three, five, yes. it wouldn't be a big deal. Because you can have different agents that elevate, activate one versus yes. that. Now, if this work then it will take a long time to build up some kind of yes. uh, huge amount of agent and big, huge library. But it may take a long time. Yeah, of course it will take. The, the, no, the first stage will take a lot of time. The whole point, you take me 10, 15 years to create the system, but then it will work very fast. Like computers, you have to invent the right I system. Think that, I think that this, to start with, you need to do... Yeah, but no, I'm not bothered. I don't know how to start and what to do. <laughs> yes, yeah, this is the whole point. It's asking you, yeah. How do you can imagine such a project? As a mathematician, you can only kind of, kind of yeah, listen, right. yeah. Like, May say say it words, yeah, but you don't know how to do that. There are so many things you, you have to know. So you know the you know, bacteria which are used to treat cancer, BCG. Yeah. So uh, to other cancer. Because they use glucosis, yeah, because, because it's that's fifty years old, they still yeah. do it. Yeah, they try to attack the cl the cell which use gly glucosis, right, I guess. Right? And of course this is one possibility to make it more efficient. To breed this bacteria to kill all cells which use glycosis. Or, or, but then select them to kill all the cancer cells. But this is a more sophisticated level. I don't want to go, this will be kind of science fiction. So I'm trying to make it more or less realistic. Yeah. <laughs> but this of course ultimately what you want to do. Yeah. So, so, so you start with something that is already useful. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then modify it, modify it in this way, exactly. And make it much more yeah. better tuned, that's sure. 
That's it would be uh, very close. Uh, this, of course, very, very kind of very, uh, one of the inspirations, right? Bacteria, which select uh, like some glucose, and they invite actually immune system. Yeah, they don't ki kill the cells directly, I guess. Yeah, uh, but that's certainly fun to to, to pursue this uh, to this yet. Yeah. But this again, from a mathematician point of view, there are these really mathematical kind of ideas there. So uh, maybe. Perhaps where, where your idea could, could uh, what would be important in your idea, what we are doing currently a lot is simply trying to develop individual lineages right. that, for example, are resistant to an antibiotic. Right. right? And, and the reward there is very clear because yes. the antibiotic a, a, a attacks the, the bacteria directly. But, what, but there we are having a slow evolution because we are actually... Uh, uh, and selecting on individual clones and not on a population that, as a population, does yeah. better. Yeah. And, and if you had a way to have a system that has a, an answer, uh, 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 exchange of DNA, so, so yes. where, where the, the, with recombination, right. where the different bacteria can exchange yes. among themselves, and where the reward is not at the level of the individual clone, but is at the reward of the population. Uh, uh, then you would probably be able to evolve things much faster. Yeah, exactly. This exactly, is exactly to find this fast evolution scheme. Yeah. And because that, yeah, that would be the, the closest parallel to, to, the, to the deep learning, where you yes. are putting several yeah. levels right. of... Right, right, right. right. And then, but then you have to, be, uh, like in, in, in the computer, you have to weigh simple chemical control directing in this or this way. You can be prepared for that, yeah? That must be key, say, stop this process or start this process. Starting uh, exchange kind of faster, smaller, whatever, f or slower, and then, but this you have to make already some kind of organisms controllable in this way, and then using their populations, so we can do it really uh, play as with a computer, and then we can make experiments and just do it, like to make experiments with different algorithms with the computer first, the very primitive thing, but just. But one way is, is to is to is to measure the the environment. So to try, you want to try to, to find a bacterium that is able to change the environment. For example, the great the, 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 yes. the, the molecule that you have put in. Right, absolutely. This was the first problem. Yeah. And, and and then what you need to know is to measure the environment, and to and and to respond to the changes in environment by adding things to the environment. For example, for bacteria it would be giving glucose only when your concentr right. concentration okay. starts to go down. Right, you know, exactly. but again, you know, this of course is done in London by technology, people do this a lot. And you need to make sure that the reward is not at the level of the clone, but it's at the level of the population. The level of population, right. No, but the point again, this was done a lot in like technology, people do this all the time. The question is to create particular kind of bacterium who will do it much faster than usual bacteria, the whole population, organize it and control. So you have to make some big preparation, really design, engineer some kind of DNA, some bacteria first, and then start doing that. Well, the best is you did not have to. And the best and to perhaps to not have to do that is, is to have exchange, have a system where you have you have a number of, of, of plasmids that, mm -hmm. that can exchange between bacteria. Yes. And so if you have two populations of bacteria, one that is highly mutagenic and the other one that is good at yes. expressing the plasmid, right. and have them exchange. Right, and, uh, but this is the highly mutagenic will be unstable, right, eventually. It may very well die, so you want to make it control, at least, whether it's mutagenic or not. But There's you could die do that by having two populations. Mm, one, yes. One that it re responds to the selection, and the other one that does the mutagenesis. Yeah, this, okay, this, uh, no, just, I, I, I can't say, but I imagine because they exchange the DNA, they make exchange by their uh, wrong gene, it's not all mutagenic, right? So you, you want to still to have some the control, and the chemical control properties of this bacteria. You see, but that what you say, you just you allow them too much freedom. My idea to make it feel like a computer. So they do what you want to do. They not do exactly, you know, they don't have this freedom, being or not being mutagenic, you see? Then we really will be much better control what you do. But, but what you ex say is a kind of more close to real life. I, I want a more artificial situation. No, no, <laughs> it would be far away from real life because what we would do is that we would have a division of labor. Yes, of course. Yeah, I understand the idea. No, no, of course. It's, I think it's maybe first step. But I think then you have to be more sophisticated and more controlled. But this, of course, is uh, this how it can work. Yeah, we have population of different kind of bacteria and they exchange for these plasmids and this mutagenic, this or not, but this plasmid must mutate here and then go there. Yeah. 
and they don't mutate anymore. But then you have to know how to make balance from one to another and when you stop it. And there was uh, a trick with it, you make sure that you, your selection is on the population of the bacteria, on one part of the population yes. of the bacteria. Yes. Certainly. And so, so then, the yeah, there might be, but then you have to eat somewhat different. This eat, uh, give you the lactose and this glucose, and you can balance this, something like that. Yeah. Of course, but this is what you have to imagine that and just uh, then try to uh, make experiments. And, and But the, the, at the end result, you want to be kind of the simple for use and very efficient, right? Something. But why is this a mathematical idea? I don't understand why. Oh, well, because you think mathematically, what is uh, system is amplification. Just if you try to make imagine a dynamical system, there is amplification. Well, we don't know, and we have no way to speak about that. And and, and if you just try describing in general terms, then you can imagine how it will behave in this and that situation. Of course, mathematical in a way, it's a structure which can be potentially described up in general terms, right? PCR is mathematical phenomenon. It's shame mathematicians didn't invent it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think absolutely. <laughs> Someone who never published a paper invented it. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, but even then, when Malis came up with that, you know, I was very unhappy exactly because it was mathematical. It was not biology, so simple. I think biology was very annoyed. Yeah, it was. It was really because mathemat mathematical sort of in nature. No, no, the, just the whole idea of evolution of, of Darwin. I think he was a mathematician. He couldn't make multiplication table, but he was not really a great biologist, but he had mathematical intuition. Mendel. Mendel, yeah, another story. Yeah, this is how he was a biologist, he used mathematics. But, but Darwin was a philosopher who used mathematics and was so successful, despite the fact he was very poor at biology, actually. No, he did very nice experiments in biology. Darwin? Yeah. No, he had a very absurd idea about inheritance in the blood, insisting on that. Yeah. He, he made experiments but later on. Do everything right. Yeah, yes. of course. No, of course he was not an idiot. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but his, but his, his, his experiments on, on, on plants... Uh, on plants. Are quite but late. it was late in life, actually. He started this doing late in life, I think, plants. And this was good, yeah. The plants, I think, it was very interesting. But in, in evolution, what he thought about inheritance was bi biologically, I think, no, 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 not very good. But mathematically, it was a fantastic idea. This you can scheme everything by, by, by big numbers. It is exponential function, and this, this will write mathematics. It is exponential function. When you have these numbers that are like 10 to the 18 or something of viruses in the environment, I mean, it's a big number. Everything can happen there. You cannot predict it. All your intuition goes to hell. It's big numbers. And this is uh, which you can want to exploit them without understanding them. Uh, you're asking a question which Darren didn't solve, right? Da Darren taught us about variation and selection. Uh, we thought a lot about selection. But uh, the structure of variation is still a mystery, yes. right? And, and your question is exactly um, ah, but now we have we have to control variation. Yeah, you have to some control over variation. It will be not noise, not cell point substitution, but actually big chunks of DNA is put in and out, which is certainly by far more efficient, right? It's certainly maybe lethal with higher probability, which is good, so you don't have misfits. But when it works, it works very well. And then, of course, there may be point adjustment. This is how it works. And this was actually a mistake by Darwin. He believed only, so how to speak, in point mutation. He never believed in large mutation, which actually was probably the crucial in evolution. That's a mystery that some call evolvability, right? How come uh, it variation happens on some sort of a low-dimensional manifold which allows for selection? Yeah, but this actually, I think it's very much mathematical issue, which we don't understand there. Yeah. It is we don't understand how it works. And this we will not understand with bacteria, as we don't understand neural networks. It's not the issue to understand. It's mathematical structure, and you can be guided by some intuition, mathematical. But we don't understand it rigorously, but it's okay. I mean, we have to live with this. So, uh, you know, a part of, uh, I guess, uh, metaphoric uh, 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 answer with some poetic license is modularity. We understand that. Yes, mo modularity uh, is a factor. Modularity will appear in, 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 in life everywhere, even like in, in the universe, you have clusters of matter up to some point, right, where gravitation acts. And then it disappears, it's not universal, right? So everywhere it works for some reason. Otherwise, no, no structure. You have rather chaotic things, well, only kind of, you know, not everybody will, you know, can make life out of them, right, if you have homogeneous structures. There is heterogeneity, it's kind of organized by modularity, clusterization, otherwise it wouldn't work. That's why it's so. But, uh, but exactly how it works, we don't know. But that's probably why your uh, you know, imaginary immune, evolvable bacterial immune system doesn't exist. We, we, put, we know how to create 
uh, how to introduce mutability, but we don't know how to structure the mutability. No, no, but the point, it will have your purpose, not their purpose. That's the whole point. Actually, what Darwin was saying, show me organism which serves somebody else's purpose, and I surrender, which is, so of course, you cannot do it. Like, <laughs> it was easier to say, yeah, but this exactly it cannot evolve, because it will serve your purpose, not good for the system, good for you, because you, you adjust the final result and modify it all the time, sure. But machinery already there, it's so many, you know, just, it's, it's wasted, yeah, I mean, thing. all these things are wasted, we don't use it enough, yeah, all the bacterial machinery. And as a mathematician, it's exciting to have it into, uh, how, without even understanding detail, understand how we can combine them, right? Understand, and again, only experimentally, we cannot imagine it, only can roughly imagine it. And the schemes of use it may be rather general, how you make a certain algorithm, how we make computers, which actually what people were trying to do in molecular machine, they you imitated the scheme of computers, which I, th I think is not right, because they're not adaptive to, to the system. You have to really go along with what you, you know happens in biology, and then come with the result. Okay, so I have nothing to say, I mean, you only was asking, and I, I just... <laughs> So, so we, can, we can make, is this I think artificial evolution, what you said, uh, maybe, maybe we are pursuing and see, we talk, talk to the right people. Uh, so if, if you want to continue with the subject, right, uh, one lesson from uh, success, if you perceive this as success of deep learning, is that it's not really about deep learning, it's about deep teaching. Right? The, the, the secret, if you ask me, is in the sort of incremental uh, construction of the system. Uh, right, and so then, in designing the kind of system that you're asking for, I guess the secret would be not to have selection based on the right. uh, you know, particular... But incremental, but yeah. Have a, a cascade, cascade of absolutely, selection. absolutely. With cascade of selection. Yeah, with cas cascade of selection. Of of right, on population, but with cascade, and which is what we organize, and cascade is exactly, it has an amplifying power. Of, of structural, of structuralization of what happens. But this again, we have to think about that and just try to make it, and it's you know, not easy. This would be, for biologists, invent simple, indeed, model problem, model situation which can actually can be done and see uh, how it works. But, but you have to. Uh, you may want to talk to Dieter Tautz on this. He's the director of Max Planck Institute for Evolution Biology, mm -hmm. and his research is exactly what you request. Yeah. Sure. No, no, this is exactly why I'm asking uh, as an audience where it have happens and how to bring this together and bring these people together and just discuss it. I think it's a very exciting issue. Yeah. Because he works on molecular evolution, genetic basis of adapting, adaptation processes. Yeah. I think it's the direction that you yeah, want. Yeah, but the, one point you studied, but I think the fun to make it really, kind of in lab, to make it physically. This is, of course, the mathematician just only can desire that we cannot do that. Yeah. And Okay, I have nothing to say more. But you got some names. Yeah, there are some names, yeah, sure. That we, we, these names must be incorporated in, in future something, yeah.